Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Muscle of Yarn remote podcast. <laughs> Quarantine cast. Quarantine cast. Uh, so Kelly and I are coming to you from two different locations um, on a different platform. And our hope is that the audio is a little better with the video this time. Um, it's, uh, I think, challenging for all of us to try to work through some of these remote sessions. Uh, we're used to being in the same room together. So, yeah. Um, but we normally podcast, and Kelly is actually podcasting today, from our yarn store in Shelburne, Vermont. Um, it is closed to the public, but we are still taking online orders. Um, so go check us out. Uh, on the web at mustloveyarn.com and feel free to join us um, on our Ravelry group, follow us on Instagram, um, join us for virtual knit night. Uh, we talk a little bit more about that in sort of the outtakes at the end. Um, and I'm Angela. And I'm Kelly. And you can find me out on social media, Instagram and Ravelry as Junior Bird Kid. And you can find me on Ravel, Ravelry <laughs> as Kelly Spins and on Instagram as Kelly O Spins. And feel free to follow or friend us on those platforms. I will say with the caveat that my Instagram page is my personal page. So you'll see other stuff on there. <laughs> um, we also have podcast mascots. <laughs> I have three of them here. Uh, this is Gage the meerkat, and this is Swatch the meerkat, and this is Stitch the meerkat. And I should grab the other two. Yeah, somebody's scarf is coming off here because my kids have been playing with these guys. Uh, and they also have their own Instagram page, which uh, has been incredibly quiet and delinquent um, in terms of posts. But I will try to rectify that. They're social bit. distancing. They are not with each other, um, but yes. <laughs> so I'm going to hang these guys out right here. There. And you can have their little creepy faces <laughs> right up at the edge of the screen for the whole podcast. That's really. You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> oh, so we usually like to start off with a, a pick of the week. And um, do we have one this week, Cal? We're we still get... just the um, gift card promotion and awesome. free ship. Yeah. Awesome. So the gift card promotion is uh, if you buy a $100 gift certificate, you'll get a $15 gift certificate free. So uh, you just put a $100 gift card in your cart and a $15 gift card in your cart, and it will automatically give you the $15 one um, for free when you check out. And awesome. uh, it is, um, you can you can take advantage of that as much as you want. So you can put multiples in your cart, and some people have done that. And uh, the only thing I recommend is because our system um, will only allow you to do one discount type per checkout if you want to buy uh, physical goods and take advantage of the free shipping and do the gift card one do two separate orders so that you'll get the free gift card on the gift card order and then the free shipping on the the order that you do um, for physical goods so cool yeah awesome um, all right. Excellent. So we are both wearing some hand knits today. We are? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I am wearing... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, so <laughs> I'm wearing uh, my shift cowl. It's an Andrea Mowry pattern. And I used two skeins of Malabrigo Arroyo and one uh, skein of Primrose Jasper DK in mine. Nice. I am wearing a uh, Gretel. It's a tank. Oh, hi, hi, strap. Uh, it's a tank top uh, with a whatever kind of collar this is called. Words have left my brain. Um, 
you may remember if you've been watching the podcast. So I knit this last spring, summer-ish, I think. And when I seamed the shoulders following the directions, um, it made the neckline a little more droopy um, than I was comfortable with and a little more cleavage showing than I was comfortable with. So one of the things I have been doing recently is sort of busting out some of these old projects that need attention. Um, so I seamed up the shoulders a little bit more yesterday and nice. it just, it just tugged it up just enough to where I don't feel as uncomfortable or like I'm flashing everybody. Um, <laughs> I might, if I bend over, like these are, these are hard shirts to like lean over in. Um, but if you're just sitting or standing, um, it's totally fine. So this is, uh, the Barocco modern, the comfort cotton Mod modern? modern modern cotton i think yes the, it, the cotton on blend yes and it yes. is unfortunately um a discontinued color this purple uh which is why i bought it because i liked it um but it's uh the gretel it's a pretty easy straightforward pattern really nice for summer um and as you can see you can like wear it under a blazer um you could wear it by itself um, very nice for changing the seasons, changing weather, changing. I'll move the cats out of the way so you guys can see it a little bit more. So, there. Yeah, it's really pretty. I like that one a lot. Thank you. I'm glad that I fixed it so now I can <laughs> wear it. Yeah. Well, you don't have to fuss over it. You can just throw it on and go. And it's cotton. It can get washed. Yep. Um, in the washing machine. Um, though I couldn't find the rest of the yarn, I think, oh, I know what happened to it. I gave it to my mom because she knit uh, market bag or crocheted market bags out of it. Uh, so I had to uh, use a different yarn to seam the rest of it. But if you're mattress stitching, if you're doing mattress stitch correctly, it's basically invisible yeah. or should be invisible on the outside. On the inside, you can see of like where I sewn in the edges yeah um, but so anyway but if anybody's flipping your shirt inside out we have bigger problems yeah but invisible from the outside right anyway um so FOs I have one. I have one with me. And then like three that I apparently forgot that I had finished because I couldn't remember if I had finished them for the last podcast or not. So I don't have mine with, I actually have a couple with me, but uh, I, I don't have any with me. I have a couple that I finished, but um, there's a good reason. So it was the, um, the Hedwig owl that I did for my niece. Do you want to text me the pictures and I'll just put the pictures up I in? Or you can just show them. I can. Oops. There she is. And I did a little scarf that I cranked out on my, my sock machine too. That is so adorable, Kelly. Yeah. So, but she's on um, my Ravelry. I did do a Ravelry project page for her. So um, you can see her there too. So nice. I did, I did a whole little photo shoot. I took her out and put her in a tree. So awesome. <laughs> so yeah, it was cute. My, it was cute. My, um, I told my sister that I was going to be sending her to my niece. So my niece is 10, just turned 10. And I said to my sister, I'm like, you know, when, when it comes, do you mind either doing a video or Skyping with me or something so I can see her opening it? And so she, she took a video of her when she opened it. It was oh, cute. That's so cute. And then she sent me a message. She's like, I love Hedwig. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was really sweet. Yeah. <clears throat> so I, um, I did my sweater surgery. Ooh for my descent sweater. Nice. Um, so for the new folks, I knit a descent sweater by Andrea Rangel. Um, I followed the pattern and the pattern said to go up to a relatively large 
um, needle size for the color work. I had a couple of minutes where I was like, mm, I should, probably shouldn't do this. And then I did it anyway. Uh, and what I found was just the um, color work and the yoke was made the sweater too big for my taste. Um, so I felt that it fit awkwardly and I was concerned that I wasn't going to wear it. Um, and having invested in um, nice quality yarn, it just, I, I couldn't let that pass. Um, so my options were either to completely rip it out or to try to sweater surgery it. So to basically go right below the color work, um, clip the yarn, pick up all of the stitches, and basically like you would for like a sock tube, um, mm -hmm. pull the yoke off and then re-knit in the opposite direction. Um, in the meantime, I had also decided that instead of steaking the sweater, I would turn it into a pullover um, because I just, I kind of like the way it fit. Uh, and I just, it seemed, seemed like a good idea. Um, so I am happy to report that I successfully sweater surgeried my yeah. um, descent sweater. And I put a bunch of pictures up on my project page showing sort of the de-clipping and the ripping back and the re-knitting. Nice. Um, so, right. so not only did I have to sort of invert the charts and um, work decreases where there were increases originally called for, um, but I also had to remove the steep panel and account for that in the directions. But I think overall it does need to be blocked. You can see where I picked up the stitches from because the yarn was already mm -hmm. knit, so it was a little crinkly and I didn't wash it first. I just re knit it. <laughs> I figured I'll wash it later, it'll be fine. Um, but I think all in all, it um, has turned this into a sweater that I will now wear uh, because the yoke is not as giant. So I'm pretty happy. That looks great. Thank you. Awesome. Is there's back. Nice. So you can see you can see my pickup line right there. Uh, a little bit. It's really a hard to bit. see. <clears throat> I was super excited when I figured out if I clipped it in the right spot, I wouldn't actually even have to reattach the sleeves. They were all still attached, um, which was awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so that project is done. And I marked it done. And I enlisted William to help me take a bunch of pictures. <laughs> um, of nice. a bunch of different sweaters that I realized I didn't have any final pictures for. So, nice. Yeah. Um, so that one's done. I did also finish uh, the Copenhagen sweater that I was working on. I didn't bring that one with me, um, but all the details are up. I linked it in show notes. Uh, you can see that was another sweater that William was helping me take pictures for. Um, and then I think the last time we podcast, I had started a little Frankie hat by Casa Pinka. Mm -hmm. Um, so I finished that one and then I knit a second one. Wow. I brought neither of them with me because I couldn't remember if we talked about them or not. Um, but I linked them in show notes and maybe I'll throw some pictures up so you guys can see, um, see them. Uh... If, again, that's that Zoom stuff. Like that was a project I was working on while I was have been in these Zoom meetings, um, or Zoom testifying, Zoom listening to legislative stuff. Um, so that's kind of my list right now of cool. those. The um, the only other one that I didn't show, and I've worn it a ton because it's been great. I've been wearing it outside because there's just a. It's been kind of windy. So I've been wearing it outside so my neck doesn't get cold, but I finished. Um, so I posted my limitless cowl pattern on Ravelry. Uh, so you can, if you're interested in buying it, it's there. And it's also on my website. Um, 
And the cool thing is, so I found out when I was posting my pattern on Ravelry, we use Shopify here at the store and we also, I use Shopify for my, my cranky sheep business. And when I was posting it, I discovered that Ravelry now has this thing. If you have a Shopify store where if you have patterns that you publish, you can sell them on your website and then um, you can insert a script in your Shopify store so that if people buy them, you can, um, using some different coding, have them click a button at the end and it will automatically put it into the Ravelry library. Wow. So yeah, it's really cool. That is so, cool. Yeah. So I set that up on mine and I'll have to do it for some of our muscle of yarn patterns that we've got too. So that if people don't want to buy it directly through Ravelry, they want to buy it and do just one checkout. Like if they're buying some yarn and other things, they can buy it um, all at the same time, but it'll still go in the Ravelry library if they want. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's really cool. Yeah. So um, this was the, the very basic one. Um, and it's very plain, but a great beginner knitting project. So I did kind of a progression of um, the cow. So the pattern is just one pattern, but there's three different cows included in it. And this is kind of the, the super beginner basic one. And then it steps up to this one. And then it steps up to this one. Nice. So, uh, so yeah, I wrote it. Um, a while ago and finally got the pattern up and I taught it as a class here at the store and uh so yeah it worked out well nice so that's up and I so I finished that cowl finally the the kind of plain one of course the simple one was the one that I left to the end but um yeah but that's pretty much all I've finished I haven't I haven't done I haven't done very much knitting at all so I've been so busy doing other things so that's the way it goes. Yeah. Yep. Um, I did start a couple of things, though. One that I did talk about last time on the podcast that I was going to start, and the other one is something that is completely new that nobody's seen. So, you know. I have, a, I have, I have some of both of those. <laughs> <laughs> so I have continued to work on my um, All Points South um, Cowl by Casapinka. So if you guys are seeing a theme here from our last podcast, the Casapinka cast on parties, um, there was a reason for that. Apparently I was knitting <laughs> everything Casapinka and crocheting. Um, so I've made some pretty good progress on this. Nice. That's pretty. Thank you. Um, and I have basically not worked on this for like at least a week because maybe more as I picked up the descent sweater and I've picked up a couple of other projects that I was just trying to finish. Um, but I'd like to get this one done too. So it's three color cowl slash poncho esque. So it's actually, this is the top. So it's I'm knitting. You can see it starts to increase here oh, yeah. for like the shoulders and stuff. Yep. Cool. That's so, pretty. Thank you. Fun. She's got two or three different ones. She's got like magical thinking. She's got this one, all point south. Um, you know, two or three different ones that use more than one skein of yarn. So this is three skeins of yarn. Uh, kind of like those projects because they use up stash or it's a good way to like mix and match um mm. lots of different single skein sock yarns to my darn yarn and then bag and she's i she keeps doing updates and i keep I know. having to like walk away because i'm like oh that one's really pretty i know she found some other um wax cotton yes. and canvas yeah that she's doing it's funny that's the one that I've got my stuff in today too it's such a great size it's and perfect fix so many things in here and yeah, I think this I, is the regular size she has a large size yeah. too I've been eyeballing a large size one I know it's great I use this all the time Me I love too. it yeah so check out her website 
um, darnyarnmn.com and she's yeah. got them listed up there. I know she's been, it seems like she's been doing almost like weekly updates. Yeah, she's been doing updates. It's great. Oh, yeah. So check out right. bags. So, well, I just started a new row, which is silly, but whatever. Oh, so I can keep talking if you want to finish your row. Uh, okay. It's just all knit. So you keep talking. Okay. Um, so the other thing, Thing I've been working on is a crochet project. Yes, the world has ended. <laughs> I'm working on a crochet project. Um, this is very exciting. Uh, the truth of the apocalypse. <laughs> right, Angela's crocheting. No, and I've been crocheting a lot. Guys, look at all of these squares. Look at all of these squares. What yarn are you using? Uh, this is all Bloom and Fiber Arts okay. yarn so far. Um, it's all, these are all leftovers from that, uh, shift along that I made. Yep. So I just started with a new color, which is this one here. And then I've got this stack right here. Um, so this is the Casapinka Blanket of Calm crochet blanket, um, for, I mean, I suppose you could use any weight of yarn you wanted. I'm using fingering, so I'm gonna need like 200 and some squares. I have 38, I think. <laughs> to make like a throw size. Yeah. 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 Um, but I've got nothing but scraps. Uh, I've got tons of sock yarn scraps to use, so I just figure um, it's a pretty good, just mindless um, project. I've been measuring my Zoom meetings by the number of squares. I've been able to crochet. Uh, it's been kind of a game on Instagram for me right now. <laughs> that was a seven square meeting. <laughs> uh, yep, I've had a few of those. And I'm finding that the crocheting is getting more comfortable, right? Again, it's that muscle memory of yeah. the actions and tensioning the yarn. Yeah. And although I'm just making basically doing like the same stitch over and over and over again. Um, it's that it's, it's just learning the technique and, and developing those muscles, um, which is what I'm able to do when I knit. And this kind of project can give you that muscle memory for crocheting. So. Yep. Super fun. It's really funny. So Bob um, started and finished a new hat. I should have brought it with me. It came out really well. It's one that he designed all himself. And I just told him how many stitches to cast on and how long to knit for and that kind of thing. So it's got gray ribbing on the bottom and it's got a folded brim and then it just goes into a dark blue stockinette for the top. So he finished that, but he, he was trying out different knitting techniques. So he, he's like, what's this called? And I look over at him and he's like, figured out continental knitting. <laughs> he just did it. He's like, well, he's like, I was kind of watching. He's such a like engineering brain. He's like, I was just kind of watching what I was doing. And he's like, and this seems so much more efficient. So I just started doing this. And I'm like, yep, that's continental. There you go. <laughs> so, but then he was like, he did that for a while. And then he switched back to throwing but he he does more like what I was doing which is it's not it's not truly flicking but it's you know not truly throwing either it's kind of a hybrid somewhere in between and so he was doing that and he's like this is kind of like continental but a little bit different and I'm like yeah and like a lot of people will call that flicking and he's like oh he's like well I think I like this one <laughs> it's because he, he's figuring out the tensioning of his yarn and I told him once he had that figured out it knitting would just seem a lot easier to him um, right so yeah so he he was getting it and he wants to knit a scarf next I think is what he said he's like would it be crazy if I knit a sweater and I was like no he's like but it would take me forever and I was like well and, you know he's like but I kind of want something I can just like sit and knit like I just want knitting and I was like okay well you know you could do a scarf or you could do a sweater you know once you get past the top of the sweater it's just a whole lot of knitting anyway so so it's been pretty funny um so this is the thing I cast on that is new 
and it is you can see through it if I hold it up like this it's very lightweight um, it's super fuzzy and it's got tweed uh, so this is a yarn that we've care and yes there's there's texture it's really hard to pick up and see on camera but you can kind of see it um, so it is going to be a sweater and I'll show you the picture and I did put this on Ravelry. It's a trendsetter. So the yarn is, um, it's a Lana Grossa yarn and they actually just discontinued it. So it's not one that you're gonna be able to get anymore, but I'm making this really nice big oversized sweater that has a cool cowl neck. And um, so it's Peru tweed striped rib oversized pullover. <laughs> it's a mouthful. And uh, so trendsetter distributes Lana Grossa. And uh, so Barry Klein is the designer for that sweater. Nice. So it's, it was really cute. And um, so, yeah, we, have, we still have some of this yarn left. Um, but yeah, it was kind of too bad because it's, it's really a really cool yarn. I really liked it um, when we brought it in. But you can see the little bits of tweed in there. So uh, I am just kind of starting. I'm on the back. I'm almost at the point where I've got to mark where the armholes are. It is pieced. Um, and because it's so big and slouchy, you actually start the armholes pretty, pretty low on the sweater. Well, they're not. You just mark them so that when you pick up the stitches, you'll know um, where they pick up. Uh, so I started that. And the one that I actually... Um, talked about last time and started I had to do a couple swatches because I actually had to go up a needle size which I was so excited about um, because then I didn't have to knit it on smaller needles but it still seems like it feels to me like it's taking a while to knit so I think that's why I cast on this this one because it the, the yarn is technically considered um, a worsted weight the sweaters knit on nines so those are my zings that I'm using. So this is going quite fast because I haven't been working on this for that long. Um, and I think that's why I started a new one because this one, this is the other one that I was doing, the brand, uh, Brandolin top. It's a little t-shirt and I'm doing that in, it's actually also a Lana Grossa yarn, um, but it's a linen. And it's really hard to see because it's on circular needles and um, apparently my yarn is going every which way um, but that's the color of it and so it's I'm just it's bottom up so it's just a lot of stock in it there's a little bit of garter at the bottom so it's just a lot of stock in it which is actually good because then I can just sit and I don't have to worry about it I just knit and I'm really enjoying this yarn it's um, really nice to work with so it's the solo lino Linnea Pura, and it's a Lana Grossa yarn. So that's nice. the one thing. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So that's kind of what I've been working on when I've been working on stuff um, for knitting. But nice. I um, yeah. I picked up an old project that had been sitting around for a while as well. You see a thing here, I'm trying to like clean my stuff up <laughs> yeah I know as, as I was tidying up my craft bunker I was looking at all the unfinished projects and I was I was thinking about I have to seriously sit down and either start going back to, on my list because remember I had that list and I had ca everything categorized as like high priority medium priority and low priority and then stuff that had to get pulled out yep I have to go back to that because I was actually making it, I'm really good about doing things off of lists and oftentimes even just for work and different things. I, if I make lists, I'm so much better about getting the stuff done on the, on the list because I can see it and I can just cross it off when it's done. And I have to do that, go back to that for my whips because there's so many down there and I was just looking at them and I'm like, I would wear that if I finished it. I need to finish it. So, you know, what I had been doing before is um, if I finish something, then I could uh, start a new project 
and also work on an old project and just kind of like give myself that reward so that it didn't feel like such a chore uh, when there's so many new pretty things out there that you want to knit, you know? So um, I, I really have to do that because I do like a lot of the things that are there. And then there's some things that I was looking at and I was like, I'm never going to finish that or wear that. It really just needs to like get repurposed or go away or yep. find a new home. So, yep. So last August when I was traveling, um, one of the projects that I started and was working on was the Maritimo um, by Caitlin Hunter. And then I got back and I got distracted with other stuff, um, new sweaters for Rhinebeck and just all kinds of stuff. And so it just, it got set aside. Uh, so I picked it back up again because I, it's, you know, it's really nice yarn. And um, as we're, you know, sort of headed into summer here, um, it would be nice. I'm in a really awkward spot to show it because I was working on some short rows right now. <laughs> but um, this is the sweater and the yarn. And as you can see, I've already, you know, knit long enough to have the separated for the front and the back. Um, but as I mentioned, it's, I'm in the middle of some short rows, so it's very awkward to show. Um, but <laughs> stay tuned, because with these bottom up sweaters, uh, kind of once you get to the armhole, like they seem to go really quickly and there's not too yeah. much sleeve to knit on that one. Um, so just trying to clear some stuff out here. <laughs> Yep, I know how that goes. So I have one um, upcoming project. Okay. I think I put it on whips, but it's not really whips unless you go by the Angela has won the yarn. <laughs> That's counted in the past. Do so. Count in the past. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to make this. This is called the Longitude Longitudes T by Yearth um, Yarns. And it's a two color t-shirt um, type uh, pattern. And when, when I got the pattern, it was free. I don't know if it still is free because there's been a lot of like, for a short period of time, patterns are discounted or free. The ones that they typically do, um, so we've, we have their sock yarn and I was gonna put an order in right before the whole quarantine things happen. And well, it's going to have to wait now. <laughs> um, but yeah, most of their patterns that they do for their yarns are free. So they've got some nice ones. Yeah. So this is just, again, it's a way for me to use up some uh, sock yarn that I have. Um, so the two yarns that I, ooh, <laughs> there they go, that I pulled out of stash are, mm -hmm. this is a um, one twisted tree um, yarn. She's no longer dying or selling yarn anymore, but this is her Jane Eyre. Um, colorway, this nice gray. And this um, sort of variegated one is uh, Round Mountain um, Fibers. Um, when she was doing her Kickstarter campaign yep. uh, to build her new studio, um, I donated money in and got a bunch of yarn from her and then I haven't used any of it. So I'm going to use part of it for this. And I think I came across my yarn the other day that I bought when, when I yeah. bought it, when she was doing that. Yeah, I thought that these two together would make a really cute t-shirt. Yeah, they'd be pretty. Yeah, and a good way to use this sort of variegated yarn. Um, you know, sometimes you're like, I don't really know what to use yeah. this for. So, but I think the alternating with the two colors will help break apart any sort of color pooling issues with this variegated one. Yeah. Nice. So, I, as soon as I finish that um, Maritimo, that's, this one's going on the needles. Nice. Yeah. And then I'm sure I'll find um, some other stuff to knit. I have like two giant project bags filled with leftover worsted weight yarn. Um, so I'm looking for color work hats right now because I think I'm just going to keep on this hat kick. Nice. Everybody's yeah. getting hats. <laughs> well, it's good, you know, because you can bust your stash and you know, I like to build a little pile for like charity knits and gift mm -hmm. knits, and you know, yep. so. Yep. And that's, that's what I'm going to end up doing. I'm going to, you know, divide it out when it's all said and done, use some for gifts, donate some this fall when we do the warmth for yarn cow again. Um, yep. 
and just be, you know, sort of ahead of things and use up a bunch of my stash and leftovers. So it's a win-win. So I I'm, can show the seasons of Vermont box stuff. Yes. Too. Let's do that now. Are you ready? Yes, I am ready. They're amazing and beautiful. They're, they are. And we still have a few left. So I'm going to show them now. Which, I have to. Un while you're doing that, can I just say, so we haven't podcast for a couple of weeks and the response to sort of our social media posts about the seasons of Vermont box without us announcing it on the podcast and bringing it to all of you was overwhelming. And I, I looked at our numbers at the end of the day when the box was released and I almost started crying because it was so like, I was I know. so happy and so excited that all of you were so excited about this box. Um, I know. It's thank you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Look, yeah, I missed her crying again. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. Everybody has been so supportive of us and this venture. And the awesome thing about this is yes, we're getting some money from it, but we're also supporting a lot of local yes. small makers too, by doing these boxes. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, cause the bag maker, she's, she's, you know, a few towns over she's in central Vermont and legacy fiber arts, you know, Chelsea's in Essex and Sue's down in Connecticut. And, you know, then Caitlin Birch and the Elizabeth studios and, you know, they're all small makers and a lot of the small businesses and makers are really struggling right now. Mm -hmm. And anything we can do business to business to help them and support them, we want to do because we've had other businesses do that for us as well. So, um, for sure. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> so, so we still you, have a few left. We do. And since I opened this one, I may have to conveniently buy it. Cause <laughs> I love one less for all of you. <laughs> I know. I love this. So, so the very first thing, so if you don't want to have the surprise ruined, look away. Mm -hmm. And then when you go on and order it, don't look at all the pictures. <laughs> so when you open it, the very first thing you're going to see are these awesome bags from Joan Fitzhugh. So they're a nice, they've got a nice box pleat bottom kind of, um, so they stand up a little wedge bag and look at the fabric she found. So this is like the Valley black nose sheep and it's a batik too. And I'm such, I love batik fabrics and the bottom is as well. They're just beautiful. She did such a great job with these. So what we do is we send out an inspiration picture for uh, our bag makers, our yarn um, dyers. And uh, so then no kind of the, the theme of what we're going for. So the picture is actually, it's one I took a few years ago. And it's that one. So it's early spring is the theme for this box. And so the colors work perfectly here. And then the other thing they work perfectly on is the Legacy Fiber Arts yarn that Sue died up. This is called Spring is Sprung and it's on their cloud base. And it's 459 yards and 50 grams. And it's a, a kid mohair and silk blend. And it's really lovely. It came out beautifully. So that's that. And then Jen wrote a pattern that works perfectly for that yarn. And it's this lovely little shoulder cozy and it's got a little bit of lace detail on it. So um, that is included as well. And, and we are doing these note cards. So the, the photo inspiration that we do is being turned into a note card. So by the end of the year, if you've done all of the Seasons of Vermont boxes, you're gonna have a little collection of six note cards. So uh, they're, they're really kind of fun. They're all Vermont themed, Vermont places, sheep themed or whatnot. So, and then these great little cork pouches, the little notions pouches. And these are the Elisabetta Studio there. And 
So they all have different colored zippers and we didn't make that an, a choice. You kind of get what you get because, which made it kind of fun. So you don't know what color you're gonna get. Right. So there's and, a little surprise. And that's one of our sort of shout out to that very, that particular maker um, yes. because we had, she had to, a sort of on the fly do something different than what was planned yeah. because the space that she uses it's an incubator space and it's completely shut down they've taken it over for making um hospital and medical stuff yeah. um and so she wasn't able to get in to make what she had planned and so she had to sort of on the fly do something else which is part of the reason why yeah. all of the zippers are different colors because she had to use what she had um, yeah. so you know, it's a testament to her and her creativity and yeah. just being able to come through um, with something new sort of last minute because of all of this. Yeah. And it, that was pretty amazing that she was able to, to, to come and to get that together yeah. for us. Um, these are so cool. So Caitlin Birch Glassworks. Um, so Elizabeth Studios and Caitlin Birch Glassworks were including something from them. And I think, I think all I think of our every box. Yeah. Yep. So, and these are all different colors in the kits too. So it's this, like a kilt pin and they have glass stitch markers on it. So she does um, all glass designs. Last time she did a progress keeper. Mm -hmm. And these are all little ring, ring stitch markers and they are so, so cool. Those are they're really, hard really neat. There, but they're beautiful. And they're, they're all different, all one of a kind markers so they're very cool and let's see there's little chocolate goodies from Lake Champlain chocolates of course and uh, the little maple candies so that's what's in these little bags and last but not least is um, we're doing something from Lunaroma in each bag too, and they are a local body care maker of <laughs> things. So they, we, in the last one we did a lip balm, and this one it's a body cream, and that's the body cream that, uh, there's more hair stuck in there, surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so it's this really lovely little jar of body cream in here so and they're local they're right up the road they're like maybe five miles from us yep so or they were anyway did they move they may have moved i think they're still on pine street in burlington okay I think. anyway yeah they're they're quite close to us and um, make wonderful wonderful products so that is the seasons of vermont box this time yeah. and you can still um take advantage of the free shipping if you choose mm -hmm. to uh, use the code free shipping at checkout uh, right in the payments on the payments page there's this over to the yep. right hand side of the screen there's a little spot where you can put the code don't be so. like me don't use apple pay if you yeah unfortunately uh, code. yeah yeah <laughs> apple pay won't allow you to no. put the code in so no. um so those are retailing for 115 dollars um, we still have a couple of the first box available that was released in it, yeah. down, I think we're maybe two-ish? Three, two or three. three. Yeah, there's yep. two or three. Um, but some people didn't thought that they missed out on the first one. I actually got both of, of these um, yeah. when they ordered this one, which was super cool. And uh, yeah, so it's a really fun box. I love that fabric yeah. that Joan picked for the bag. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Sue did a great job too with the colors. Oh, it matches that picture. So like, perfect. I know. Perfectly. I know. So yeah, it's a great, it's a great box this time or yeah. bag, whatever you want to call yeah. it. <laughs> box so. of, box of goodies. Yeah. Yeah. So check, check those out. Um, yeah. I have not done anything with prizes for the retro long. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'll get to it I promise we won't forget you it just we, may come late <laughs> it's gonna come late it's the coordination of like prizes and like it's just it's it's way beyond sort of my brain space right now um but I haven't forgotten 
I will still, we will still pull prizes. It's just, there's going to be a delay. Um, so that's my 30 second update on the retro along. Uh, we have two other alongs going right now. Um, one that is started uh, on Friday and uh, was the prompting of the virtual knit group. So we haven't had a chance to announce it yet, but don't worry, plenty of time <laughs> to play along. Um, we, we have the scrap along that's been still continuing. Um, and then the new along is the Cloudsly along. So this is a new pattern um, that was released. And after like a huge amount of discussion at Virtual Knit Group and a whole bunch of people joining and wanting to knit the pattern, we just decided to make it an along. Um, so it's a really nice uh, short sleeve shirt. I think you can make it long sleeve or short you sleeve. Can. Yep. Um, pullover. And uh, it started April 10th. Um, it'll run through the approximately the middle of June. Um, it's a couple of months, you know, time to just kind of sit and knit. Um, I put together a huge list of like yarn suggestions that we carry in the store um, with the caveat that the pattern calls for fingering weight yarn. After lots of discussion in the virtual knit group, um, I have made some suggestions of things that are not fingering weight yarn for DK and sport um, to kind of get sort of those more summer type uh, yarns. But check your gauge if you're not using fingering because it will affect your pattern. So that's my public <laughs> service announcement for substituting yarns. <laughs> Uh, or you can just be like me and just wing it and who knows. But anyway, I can't, I have to, you know, I have to give the disclaimer. Um, so the list of yarns that we had talked about or had suggested, I put into show notes. They're also on the Ravelry um, information page about the knit along. Um, so if any of those uh, pique your interest, you know, take a look. Um, you will notice that we have two Quince & Co yarns listed in this list. Quince & Co has allowed us to sell our yarns online during this time frame when the yep. store is closed. Um, yep. So for the first time like ever, <laughs> mm -hmm. we're able to have that yarn up on our website. So if you're looking for Quince & Co, check it out. It is available online right now. Yeah, it, they are doing it at least until the end of April. And then they said they were going to reevaluate and, and go from there. So what we have is what we have. And unfortunately, it's pretty much what Quince has too, because they their the mill wasn't getting deliveries. And I know they've been waiting on a big delivery of owl, which is the wool uh, alpaca blend for a long time. Um, they've been out of stock of a lot of their colors. So they're they're waiting on some stuff to come in. So yeah. Yep. And all oh, Malabrigo too, them, um, they haven't been able to get anything from their mill. So unfortunately, I actually went on their website the other day. Somebody was asking about um, a colorway in their sock base. They have zero sock yarn available, wow. right? Wow. Yeah. I didn't even look at their other yarns, but I, I think most of them, they're, they're going to, it'll take some time for them to get back up and restocked. Um, because what they had on their website was all that they have available right now because they don't have any yarn coming in from the mill. So. Yeah, which is part of that supply chain issue we yeah. were talking about a month or so ago. Yeah. Um, sort of this cascade effect. Um, yeah. So. Yep. yep. Um, the scrap along still going. I don't, can't remember it, even now if I mentioned that. You did. did. Okay. Just briefly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All the details are in show notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got to finish putting my stuff in show notes and then I'll get that. Um, so I'll try to try to get this podcast edited. Um, it's probably going to have to upload from my house. So maybe by Friday it'll be up. <laughs> Who knows? It's a mystery. <laughs> yeah. Fun internet. 
But mm -hmm. anyway, I don't know that I have too much else. I don't No, I don't really have a whole lot else either. We're getting close on time and we got to wrap it up anyway, so. That's true. We do. Yep. So, so yep. thank you everybody for stopping by and spending some time with us. We hope our audio is better this time. <laughs> yeah. If not, just turn our faces off and listen to us talk or, you know, or if you can lip read, then, you know, turn off the audio. <laughs> yeah. Closed yeah. captioning. I don't know. It'd probably be off too. Yeah, probably. So. Technology. Technology. Oh. <laughs> but, um, we hope everybody's. Thank goodness for it. Though. I know, right? We hope everybody's staying safe and as well. Yeah. Um, and that you're getting some time to spend by yourself or spend with your family or work on whatever projects you want. Um, and for those of you who are still working, who are essential workers, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we appreciate you. Yes, we do. So, all right. Anything else? I don't think so. Going once? Going once? <laughs> okay. I'm going to turn off the recording. All right. All right. A bit of a delay. Okay. So does it tell you that we're recording? Yep. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, so we'll see how this goes. We're trying a new platform. We're, we're Zooming it this time. And we're both at, well, you're at your office, I'm at the store, so we're at better internet connection. Well, last time yeah. we both were too, but I don't know, it was weird. I think it was a FaceTime thing. I don't, yeah, you, I don't you know. know what's really weird is because I listen to all of these when I play them back. I yeah. play back a substantial portion of the podcast when I edit yeah. it, and it didn't sound like that when I was editing it. Huh, that's so, funny. I it don't may know. have been an upload thing when you uploaded it to YouTube. I have no idea. Because it was like a, almost a seven second delay. I counted it. And really? it was, yeah. Wow. Okay. That's, I did not hear that when I, because that, that's enough that I would have picked it up when I was editing it. Yeah. So, well, hopefully, folks, this is better. We're Zooming instead of FaceTiming. Mm -hmm. which is why I have fancy background. Don't worry. I will turn it <laughs> off because the thing gets annoying if you're moving around too much. Yeah. You were just missing fingers there for I a second. Know, right. And sometimes like part of my <laughs> head. Well, what's really funny is when I do this at home, occasionally my kids will come into the room. And so like just their head will appear. <laughs> There's no body attached to it. It's just the head. <laughs> it is the weirdest thing ever. Um, I'm going to go turn my background off because that's there so I'm back in my law office with all of the fancy books behind <laughs> us <sighs> so uh so we started a thread on Ravelry uh for for anyone who's not joining us for our weekly uh virtual knit night which is mm -hmm. super fun I've been going to the Sunday ones um yeah. and it's super fun. Lots of things happen there with new knit-alongs and uh, people enabling each other. Um, but we started a what are you drinking and eating thread since everybody seems to be like making awesome drinks <laughs> and like cooking lots of cool food. Um, so feel free, share your reps recipes um, or, you know, what you're up to. Yeah. Yeah. And if anybody wants to join the knit groups, um, send us a message and we'll send you the link to, to join. We're doing all of them through Zoom. And uh, so we've got one Sunday that's one to three Eastern Standard Time and on Wednesday, five to seven, same. Um, and yeah. those are our regular knit group times that, that we've done in the past. And the weather's been so nice on Sundays. We've, <laughs> I've had to ditch, unfortunately. I get them started and have to ditch, but oh my gosh, I, literally both Saturday and Sunday worked from the time I got up in the morning until about 6 30 at night outside we've been pulling all the old fence posts we moved our chickens 
Uh, so Saturday, I moved all, we removed all of the old fence posts and filled all of the holes. And so that was an all day project. And then Sunday, we moved the chickens. Um, and because the, my husband, the way he built the two coops, they're on skids so we can pull them with a the tractor. Okay. And we got um, fencing that goes around both the, the coops and then they can kind of run and it's movable fencing. It's electrified so predators won't go in. And um, so we can move them and we're going we're gonna to move them every, well, we made it so that the fence, we can move the fence a few times before we actually have to move the coops. Nice. So, nice. Yeah. So it's, we've been trying, we've been doing tons of outside stuff when the weather's good. So yeah, getting, we've been doing um, some outside stuff too. Um, less inside stuff. I know lots of people have gone on like cleaning kicks and I'm just like, Meh. <laughs> I've done a little bit, but I haven't yet just because we, you know, on the days when the weather is so good, I take advantage of that. And yeah. we actually have expanded our garden. It's going to be almost, we expanded almost double what nice. we had. So um, yeah, so that's going to keep me really busy. But I, uh, I did, I did tidy up the craft bunker because I've been getting some cranky sheep orders that I've been working on. So nice. between that and coming <laughs> to the store and filling online orders, that's been keeping me pretty busy. So I bet I've um, organized my stuff a little bit. Um, and what's become abundantly clear is I will probably never run out of yarn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's that. Um, I have found yarn that I have forgotten that I have. <laughs> and it's as so I've been going through things, I've been like, oh, right. That so yarn. Um, so there's been some of that. <laughs> and then, of course, there's, I want to start making all of the projects um, yeah. with that yarn. I'm just thing here a little bit uh and I feel like I feel like I should have like a ton of like knitting and downtime but I'm not sure that I I do I yeah I've been working on some projects while I'm on all of these zoom meetings mm -hmm. um I've been doing a lot of zoom stuff <laughs> I will be happy if I never have to see Zoom again <laughs> in a few months uh, once everybody stops using Zoom. Yeah. Uh, but they ha I have to be kind of picky or careful what kinds of projects I'm working on because I have to be able to not really look at it or it, I can't be following along on a pattern. Yeah. So, so currently I have been knitting or knitting, crocheting these guys. Cool. These little itty bitty squares for the blanket cool. of calm. Um, I'm 15% done. I did the math <laughs> last night. <laughs> hey, that's all fun. Exactly. Exactly. So, cool. well, should we, uh, should we get this thing started? Yep, because you've got stuff and I've got stuff. Yep. I think we both have to be wrapped up by 11 or a little before 11. So, yep. Yep, I'm doing a virtual private lesson. And I am uh, teaching a class, virtual class as well, to a whole lot of people. So that'll be fun. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Um, okay, so it says it's recording. And I figure we can just chitty chat for a little bit, and then it should download onto my laptop, and then I should be able to suck it over into iMovie. <laughs> yay brave new world of trying to podcast remotely mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i'll just go to oh there's mr william can you listen i suppose i'm not really saying anything that interesting anyway <laughs> no <laughs> So do you have um, lessons or people taking advantage of the personal shopping with Kelly? You're going to be missing an ear soon. I know. 
I mean, what, what we, sh- what we should do is we have a splitter with like the over the ear um, headphones. So everybody can listen on their own. So that's probably what we should do. Or we could just, cause we're talking to Kelly. Ah, uh, there you go. See, now we don't need these. When I, when I'm, ta- when I'm doing stuff, like I'm doing work stuff, I have to put these in cause yeah. Mm-hmm. The audio is actually quite good when you have those in. Is it? Is it better than? Yeah. Yeah, I figured. I mean, it's just, it. it's a little closer and it's not as tinny sounding. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so. I think when we actually record, record, we'll have the headphones in and I yeah. can because this is, you'll, I, I'll be able to see when it came out. I'll be able to see how much different the audio changed. Yeah. Well, because this is, we're trying out a new platform for our podcast, and um, I'm going to see how it works when I plug it into the podcast stuff. So I'm we're just doing, podcast. okay, well, we're just doing a little test run again. Um, but when you do plug in the podcast. Maybe, because they're probably going to be recording from home. So you could probably pop in and say hi. Or we could use your splitter to so we both have headphones and you could podcast for a little bit with me. Does that sound like fun? You have to bring your knitting in though, I think. To get a podcast on a knitting podcast. <laughs> have you been doing lots of knitting? No. Oh. I just have other stuff to do. You have some other stuff to do. Yeah. You guys do you have your schoolwork and stuff that that they've sent home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Normally, I just do it on the computer. That's like where. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Are they doing virtual classrooms? Um, not quite to that extent yet, though. The programming's changing a little bit. Come like Monday or maybe the Monday after. Um. So right now they have like a one. His school has a once a day check in with a teacher, the whole class. And then it's a lot of self-study right now, right? Yeah. So I don't know if they're going to transition to more virtual type classrooms because they're going to start mm-hmm. doing new material. Right now it's just all maintenance material. So mm-hmm. nope, don't play with that. That's work computer. Please don't touch that. Okay. Yeah, you can touch the iPad, but um, you have your own computer. Yeah. This, I'll have to send you a picture of what this workspace looks like, Kelly. It's totally ridiculous. <laughs> oh, my God. You should see Bob. He has probably half. I mean, our dining room table is really wide, too. But he's got half of it because he's got dual monitors set up. He's got his keyboard. He's got his mouse. And he's got his laptop, which is hooked into the dual monitors. And so sometimes when he's doing video conferencing, he's got three screens he's using. It's so wild. It's so yeah. crazy. Yeah, I, I, have something, control. I have something close to that, but my um, home office is actually um, my guest room bed. So, oh, so there's that. that. My, my chiropractor is going to love me when I get back because my back is going to be totally messed up from, oh. from hunch. I mean, it's, it's um, terrible. Yeah. Stop. 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 This is going to be awesome. Oh, right. Did you, is it in slow-mo mode? <laughs> no, <laughs> you're now, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, depending on what you put in there, we could probably use some of that clip for the outtakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. Super extreme close-up of the side of my face. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's like a dinosaur down here. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Well, I probably have a long enough clip here to play around with this and okay. um, teach myself the new pro- this new program. Because I think the desktop has a lot more tools and things aren't quite in the same. Yeah. Place. Yeah, I think it does too. My I don't app- have a Mac, but. I've heard that from people who podcast, so. It might be better. Maybe it will have a better quality podcast. I don't know. <laughs> I, I 
we're just rolling with it, making the best of it we can, you know. We we are, and yeah, it's a little crazy, but it was so awesome to see so many of our faraway people on the Nick group on Sunday. I know that was fun, and I think even more are gonna join you for next time. So, yeah, <laughs> I see a really good big close up of you. For William Show. <laughs> now we will have mommy talking. Okay. Da, 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 Thank da. you. <laughs> All right. I think you have fun with that. I know. I think okay. it's going to be time for us. We to will. Talk. We are going to wrap this up with a story quiz. Okay. All right. Well, I won't subject you How to this anymore. How many dragon riders are there on um, Train Your Dragon? Okay. That all is right. all. Say goodbye. I'm going to see that. Oh, yeah. All right. Time for William.